In watercolor, it's very common that you tape your paper down to a surface when you paint. Today I'm going to talk to you about why I stopped doing this and the benefits of not taping your paper down. There's something incredible that you can accomplish in the medium of watercolor that is not quite the same in any other medium, and that is painting wet into wet getting beautiful lost edges in your painting, allowing colors to merge with each other on the paper, creating these wonderful soft transitions. It's where we let watercolor kind of be watercolor and we don't have 100% of control. And it's one of the things that we really need to lean into as watercolor artists. I have found that the best way to take advantage of this incredible part of the medium is to wet down both sides of your paper before you start to paint. This helps you create a wonderful wet into wet wash. And this wash is the foundation of your painting. If you can get this wash correct and take advantage of this phase of your painting, you're gonna set yourself up for success. Prior to painting in this way, I would tape my paper down. Sometimes I would pre-wet maybe a little area of the sky with a sponge or a brush or something like that. And then I would move on with the painting. An incredible alternative to this method is wetting down both sides of your paper before you paint this first wet into wet wash. Now, in order to help you understand why that's so important, I need to talk a little bit about my painting process. So I typically paint from light to dark and in three phases. I create a light value wash, a medium value wash, and then my darks and my details come third. You kind of have to think through your painting in reverse because you are painting the light area first and then painting around those areas as you progress through your painting process. So that makes this first wash very important. Now here is what that process looks like practically. First, I reference my photo and, and I lay out the composition with a pencil drawing. Then. I wet down the back of my paper and I'm not soaking the paper. I'm just getting it nice and evenly damp. Then I flip it over and I do the same thing on the front of the paper. Then I take that damp piece of paper and I lay it flat on my surface. Now this can be a little unnerving if it's your first time painting this way and it does take a little bit of getting used to. But by wetting down both sides of the paper, I'm getting my paper even more wet. Now I don't need it to be soaked, I just need both sides of the paper to be damp. Because the paper is more wet than just wetting the front of the paper, this gives me more time to work into this wet in wet wash before my paper dries. So this is the only time in my painting process where everything is wet and everything is loose. And I can really let those colors flow from one to another. I can really just think about getting beautiful soft edges, soft transitions, and really setting myself up to lay out the lightest values in my scene. Then after I paint my wet and wet wash, I let my paper dry. Then I come back and paint the middle values and the darks. By not taping my paper down, by wetting down both sides, this gives me more time to paint wet and wet because the paper stays wet longer. So it gives me more time to look around the scene, to lay in those colors, more time to work on a sky. This is a good technique for painting skies because I can work wet and wet without getting hard edges in the sky. So I really like to create skies with a lot of soft edges and I like to play with different values with laying in the light colors of the clouds first and then going back in while the paper is still damp and painting the blue around those clouds. And this approach gives me a lot of time to focus on those things. Some people ask, well, if you paint in this way, what if you wanna preserve some of the white of the paper? Well, you can do that. And if that is the case, I will dampen the, all the back of my paper. And then when it comes to the front of my paper, if there's an area of white that I wanna preserve, I just go around that area with a sponge and I'm still able to maintain the white of the paper that I want to preserve. And the key is you want to wet both sides of the paper. Say that you aren't taping your paper down and you just wet the front of the paper, the paper is gonna curl up. If you wet both sides 
evenly, that paper is gonna lay nice and flat on your surface. And because it's wet, it's not going anywhere. So it's gonna stay right where you want it to stay. And then when the paper dries, it will dry flat. When we can really take advantage of painting wet and wet and working through the light of the scene and give ourselves more time to work on the sky and lift out highlights and manipulate this first wash, we are really setting ourselves up for success. I've been painting this way for about five years now. I recommend it. If you can give this a try and really take advantage of this first wash, I think you'll see some good progress in your painting. Have you ever been really excited about a painting and you get all set up, you find that right reference that you're excited about, and then it's time to go and you feel lost? You ever had that experience? You just are having a hard time finding consistency. Some of your paintings turn out, some of your paintings don't turn out, and you're not really sure why. Well, I have a free resource that I wanna to give to you today that can help exactly with these problems. My five steps to plan a successful watercolor painting. I walk you through the crucial planning phase of your painting that will help you understand what you're going to paint first, second, and third. The planning is really so important, especially in watercolor. This medium is harder to correct. It's so immediate. So having that plan is very important. I send you a PDF that you can download. And the great thing about this is you can have it on your phone, you could print it out, and you can take a look at these crucial planning steps before you start each painting to ensure that you're thinking through these important things as you get started. You can download this right now before you start your next painting. All you have to do is follow this link here and download my five-step guide to planning a successful watercolor painting.